allies, one of the many things that decide a country's chances during war. India is not looking for one, war I mean. And I cannot speak on behalf of China, but what I can tell you is that China does not have allies. And I've said this before too. But tonight I want to talk about one particular country of interest, and that's Russia. One of India's oldest allies, Russia also happens to be a country that is slipping into China's grip. The reason I'm talking about Russia is because India's defense minister, Rajnath Singh, is there right now. He's on a three-day visit to Moscow, ostensibly to attend the victory parade on the 24th of June, which he will. But he's there for a more important task, to ask Moscow to rush the delivery of the S-400 anti-missile system. And there's another very interesting event lined up in Moscow tomorrow. The foreign ministers of Russia, India and China will be holding a virtual meeting. What makes it interesting is, of course, the timing of this trilateral. Both India and China have made their stand very clear on the Galwan Valley. What remains to be seen is which way Russia leans. Will Moscow back its old friend India or will it support China? Let's look at what's at stake. Trade tops the list. China is Russia's top trading partner. In 2018, the bilateral trade between the two countries stood at more than $108 billion. Germany happens to be Russia's second biggest trade partner, accounting for trade worth less than $60 billion, almost half. That should tell you something, how far ahead China is. And compare it to India, and you'll see what, how, how big the difference is. Bilateral trade between India and Russia has been seven to eight billion dollars. That's for almost a decade now. In 2017, the India-Russia bilateral trade was less than a tenth of the China-Russia trade. So when it comes to economy, Russia is highly dependent on Beijing. Russia is a part of China's Belt and Road project. Then there's the Siberia gas pipeline project. The two countries also share geographical, geographical proximity. But the tide turns when it comes to defense. Russia is India's largest defense supplier. In the last couple of years, the two countries have signed several defense deals. There's a $5.2 billion S-400 missile defense system deal. In 2019, India also signed a deal worth $2 billion for the, for the T-90 tanks, the Akula-class nuclear-powered submarine deal worth $3 billion. In other words, India is a very big market for Russia when it comes to defense. And these are just a few examples. India was once among the closest allies of Russia. This was until 2014. And this has less to do with the change in government in Delhi and more to do with Russia's annexation of Crimea. There were international sanctions on Russia, and Russia leaned towards China. India, on the other hand, has been building ties with the United States, with Japan, with West Asia. Over the years, Russia has cemented its ties with China, and this is not specific to any government in Delhi. In 2017, Russian diplomats in Beijing were briefed by the Chinese government about the Doklam standoff. They were among the very few to have been brought into the loop. But Russia did not take a stand against India. How has it reacted so far on Galwan? Russia has assured its support to New Delhi when it comes to resolving issues with China. Russia's deputy chief of mission to India has said, and I quote, we hope that the tensions will soon de-escalate. Well, Russian media recently quoted presidential, presidential spokesperson Dmitry Peskov as saying that China and India are Russia's close partners and allies and have close and mutually beneficial relations built on mutual respect. But we come back to the question, which side will Russia lean towards? Moscow believes in a multi-vector foreign policy. It has tried to stay out of the US-China trade war. And when it comes to the India-China standoff too, Moscow is likely to play safe. It will not take sides, at least not openly.